So sometimes before you see anything happening that God is doing, you got to remind yourself, like David said in the word of God, I will bless the Lord at all times. Like before you see anything happening, before you see something below your doom, you got to learn to rejoice at all times. Yo, before you even see anything, God said, not worrying about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Taking no thought for your life, what you shall eat or drink. He said, rejoice. Before you see a change happening, you got to learn how to praise even when you don't see nothing happen. Knowing by faith that before you see something happen, you just got to dance anyway. You just got to praise anyway. I'm going to get an anyway praise. I'm going to give an anyway praise. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't even matter you know, what you've done. You know, God still reminds you like he's been good to you and he's been carrying your hand. And sometimes you just got to realize that you might not be where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. And so he brought you from the pit to the palace, to the prom from the pit to the promised land. So you just got to know that and just remember what he's already done for you to what he's doing now. Because that's a reason to praise him. Like, that's a reason to just get your praise on and your shout on and stuff. Because you see, sometimes we can allow our worship to dictate when God is doing something, then we give him praise. It's easy to give God a praise when God does something for you. But what about praising him for who he is until you see a change? What about praising until you see a miracle? What about praising on your way to your destiny? Sometimes God is just testing you to see if you will still praise him, if you will still rejoice, if you still trust his word, that it will come to pass. Because yet he's not a man, he shall lie. Yeah, but he said all things will work together for your good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's holding our hand. And how he is holding your hand. Amen. God has made you like you're fearfully and wonderfully made like don't let the circumstance just because you don't see a thing dictate how you pray sometimes you just gotta live right now abundant life right now today before you see a change you gotta like a change can also start with you because that's what the world is waiting on God said if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek thy face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from them. The earth is just groaning for the sons of God to take their stand. And that's what the world is waiting on. You to make a change. Before you even see a change, you got to make a change. Like in your generation. That's what, that's what that time is waiting on you for. You got to make a change in order to um, see a change in the world. See the change you've been praying for. And a lot of times, sometimes we need to realize God has already answered our prayers. There's people that you've been praying for that God has already answered. He's already, he's already um, handling it. And matter of fact, he's in control. He's in control of your life. Like, I said, don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. 
rejoice right now because there's a reason why I'm, I'm rejoicing. There's a reason why I'm praising because God has woke me up. You just got to thank him for life. Thank you, Lord, that you still have breath in your lungs. That's one thing to celebrate about. A lot of people in life, there's some people in life that don't even have what you have. There's people in life that had to walk on one leg. There's people in life that didn't survive. There's some people in life that, that they had their life just over, but you still had a life to live. So you should appreciate the fact that God has blessed you. You should appreciate the fact that God has woke you up. You should appreciate the fact that God has still kept you. The fact that God has still breathed life in you. So you speak life because life and death is in the power of your tongue. It don't matter what nobody says about your situation. It don't matter what the enemy himself says about your situation. It don't matter what your situation even look like. You got to learn how to trust God and be content in all things that he is putting it together and that he's in control. It doesn't matter how things are looking right now. It doesn't matter how the enemy is lying right now. You got to trust God's word and have faith and believe in his word that it shall come to pass. And his promises are yes and amen. At all things, they're working for you good. David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. He was content in all things. He rejoiced in everything. Like he didn't even worry about tomorrow and how tomorrow's going to work out. How, Lord, how are you doing it? You might not see nothing happening right now, but yet the Lord is still up to something. He's in control. All he said was just be still and know that I'm God who supplies all your needs. He'll take care of you. He said... <laughs> birds Let's see what's that scripture take no thought for your life what you shall eat nor drink beating what you will wear what you put on for the Lord know he already knows you need these things so it's best to just wait on him just wait on him like trust me I guarantee wait on the Lord and he shall renew your strength because the birds they neither sow no worry no harm you hear them praising every day. There's a reason why you hear them singing every day. Because God is not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. He didn't give us fear. Because see, without faith, the Bible says, without faith, not fear. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please. If you have a little seed of mustard of faith, man, you'll make it through. All things will work for your good. Because see, there's a reason why you you praise the way that you do is the reason why you got people praising and dancing the way that they do because you what you believe god for like before you even see a miracle and a breakthrough and revival happening in your family don't forget the breakthrough that you are don't forget the miracle that god has made you god is teaching you who you are before you he's this why he's trying to prepare you for what is yet to come and matter of fact, even it's already here, but he is trying to change and work on you first. Before you see the miracle, he had to get you ready. He had to build you. He had to grow you. He had to shape you. He had to make you. He had to mold you. He had to build you up to know who you are, to get you ready for what you've been praying for, to get you ready for what you've been waiting on, to get you ready and built. Like he also had to get you fit in the physical and in the spiritual to know to be ready to be ready for because if you ain't ready like how you gonna be ready how you gonna uh, step into something you're not even ready for that's why god is training you and he's teaching you he's preparing you he's growing you it's growing pains so this right here is a test of your faith to remember where you came from. Every day you should be remembering where the Lord has brought you from. You just got to keep holding on. I just want to encourage you. Keep holding on to God's unchanging hand. Keep having faith in the Lord. And keep knowing that he's on your side. And keep being still and knowing that he is God. And he got your back. And matter of fact, you're protected no matter what's going on in your life. Like, God is greater than me and he's worthy to be praised. You are covered. You are in God's hands. No matter what situation you are in. No matter what obstacle you might face. You are in God's hands. Job said, though he slay me, I will trust him. 
Joe said, you know what? I might be hungry right now. I might be tired. I might I might be like all these things. I don't might not see nothing happening right now for me and such and such, but yeah. Nevertheless, he had faith in God. Instead of doubt, instead of just being discouraged, instead of just hanging his head down, instead of feeling sorry for himself, he could have he could have just done that. But he had faith. He could have just gave up and said, you know what? Forget this, man. Forget. This. I ain't seeing nothing happen. But he had faith in the Lord. He had faith, and he believed what what God said is getting ready to happen, and believed where he brought. He was content that God was with him even through the storm. That's why he praised him. He believed that God was with him. He didn't focus on the obstacle. He didn't focus on the test. He didn't focus on the trial. He focused on God even when it came near his dwelling. It doesn't matter because what you face, it might be temporary, but with God, it's eternal. It's eternal. You see, the children of Israel, I'm going to tell you, they didn't even know where they came from. They forgot all about God as soon as the storm hit. They, they just ran away and gave up on them. They didn't even, even remember a thing. They didn't even care a thing about where God has brought them from or has taken how they've been good to them. Like, in the right now moment, like, in the right now moment. Because, see, you get so caught up and you focusing on uh, tomorrow and how things are going to work out. And, Lord, what you doing tomorrow? Your answer should be what he's doing today. What is he doing today for you? What has he already done today for you? He helped you. He gave you strength. He gave you balance. He gave you gifts. He gave you talents. He gave you abilities. He gave you everything that you need. And he also gave you strength. So God has gave us the choice. What are we going to do with those things? Because sometimes we're calling out to him like, God, I need you. I need you. And that's okay. Sometimes, another time God says, God, grace is sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient, which means he already gave you everything you need. So sometimes you just got to use what you got. Like I was saying in that other video, you got to trust and know that God is walking with you through the storm. So you praise your way through the storm. You praise and how much you know and you believe it in your heart. That's why God has to test some of you. Because test us all. Yeah. God has to test us all because when we praise it, God is testing to see if we really believe it. Is it in our spirit? Amen. Because man, it hurts, man, but God is preparing you for that. It's his that blood. Miracle. Amen. It's that his promise. blood flowing through our blood. And do we recognize it? Do and we recognize the power? Do we man, we stand on his promises and and just have joy anyway because he's just good. Because even the children of Israel, all they did was complain and worry and just hung their head. They forgot that God parted that Red Sea in front of them. There's so many Red Seas that God has parted in our lives and even in my life. And I can testify that sometimes the enemy will blindside me and make me forget about my Red Sea experiences that I've had with the Lord. And it'll get me into a ungrateful place in my feelings. worried about their when is this gonna happen yeah. and well, what are you doing and this that and the other all oh, woes me i'm going through this and i'm alone such and such but children of israel they, they didn't care nothing about what job said job said i'm content in all things that, that god is good oh paul said i was content in all things that i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living amen like all things are working for your good and sometimes you just got to rely on god's word you might not see nothing good happening but that's the thing you got to have faith and believe that god is gonna make all things together all things better and all things work out for your good and that he is in control god is in control that's what you gotta believe god is in control like he's god he knows what he's doing he's god all by himself like 
finish what he started in you before he finish what he starts on the outside because there's there's a blessing inside of you that God has built before you even see it on the outside of you like I when I was praising praising in my grandmother's room I was just like praising and just dancing and I felt that in my spirit what God was doing on the inside of me like God was showing me what he's doing on the inside first is before you see something on the outside like you can see a bigger blessing on the inside of you when you praise God you see that there's a blessing there but it's also deliverance in your praise and there's revival. also healing and revival taking place in your own spirit before you see it on the outside and that's what I mean by growth because God is preparing you for revival God is preparing you he's showing you the miracle you are and who you are and whose you are before you see it on the outside the outside of your home you, it's okay you, you praying for everybody else to know know their identity but what about your identity what about how God has made you what about who you are in the kingdom like you pray for this and it's already here God has just had to prepare you he just had to get you ready for what's already done God bless. Be encouraged. Jesus loves you so much. Keep the faith, knowing that God got your back and he'll fight for you. He said, don't worry. Don't worry about anything. Be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. And know that God is with you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? All things are working for your good. Hallelujah. Just know that. Have faith. Amen. Amen.